Welcome to a Rugby League Bat Chat coming to you from the Ark here in Headingley and on the International Day of Happiness. Who better to spread joy throughout the world of Rugby League? It's Gary Schofield, one of the most colourful characters in Rugby League, the outspoken owner of Lee Centurions, Derek Beaumont, and providing the voice of reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's League Express's very own Martin Sadler. Welcome along, guys. Plenty to talk about. And at least it's a bit warmer now, isn't it? The last weekend, absolutely freezing temperatures, games abandoned and called off. Are we actually playing rugby league at the right time of year, Martin? Absolutely not. I, I, I think it's ridiculous that we start the season at the beginning of February. You know, there are two months, February and March. I mean, I don't know much about, you know, climate change, but it seems to me that February and March in the last few years have been getting colder. Um, you, you know, we had the incredible situation at the weekend of Wakefield's game being abandoned after it had started because of snow. I mean, many years ago, I remember writing editorials in League Express saying we ought to switch to summer. This was, you know, prior to 1996. Yep. But the idea was that we'd begin in April, you know, play in British summertime, for goodness sake, not, not playing in, in, in February. If you wanted to, to design the season to fail, you would start by playing at the beginning of February, wouldn't you? And I think that's just absolutely crazy. Yeah. You know, if we played in British summertime, we'd have 31 weeks and that's enough for the you know, for, for, for the competition, well, in you, my view. If you make it, well, we've got 30 re sure, regular sure. season rounds there and playoffs, haven't we? Because someone's got to cut down somewhere. Well, you're one of the guys who's in the meetings deciding structures and when we start and when we finish, Derek. What, what's, what's your view on trying to play in the best possible conditions? Or is it just potluck with British weather? Yeah. Because mid-March snow is not it's, that common. It's not expected, is it? I mean, the, the problem you've got is the seasons are changing a lot now. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it does seem to be starting later, but... I mean, we played Batley down there. I mean, the efforts that they put in was, was, was amazing. You know, I saw pictures of that pitch the night before. I thought, there's no way we're playing. I was making plans to go out with the missus and kids, you know. And then <laughs> yeah. the next thing, Kevin's on the, on the pitch. And, I could and tell the from the Lee's Twitter and, feed that you didn't really believe Batley when they said they'd get the game yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and credit to them, you know. I mean, that just shows you community spirit. And, and down the road at yeah. Castleford, it's just, yeah, we'll, we'll call that off. You know, there's a massive effort for them. But it is, it is a problem. We, we was desperate to play that game. Yeah. Um, and Which you won in the end. In the, in the cup. We, yeah. Thankfully, you yeah. know, we're three just, and zero now. Just we're three and zero, three hours of rugby. A new injection of confidence at the club, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, some new kit, I think, because I don't think they'll ever come clean after that. <laughs> yeah, they, were, uh, they were a bit messy, but uh, no, I, th I think uh, the weather is is like anything in sport, isn't it? You know, we, we can't control it. We can't control injuries. We can't control the weather. Yeah. And whatever perfect plan you think you've got is is always going to. Be open to well, criticism. let's ask a man who used to play in this in the winter, in this yeah, yeah, appalling yeah. conditions. Yeah. We've all stood in freezing conditions at Thrummall and <laughs> unable to move, and you know, and that was just in August. Um, are, they, are they making a fuss over nothing here? Because uh, you used to play in the, in the dim and dark ages of well, the eighties. Well, 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 a question, a question I'll throw out there is: when we look at the game so far, we've seen in Super League is about the quality, yeah. right? So, so the game's been changed now. So, first of all, when you look at the way the pre-season starts for the fellas, they start in November. So that's in the mm -hmm. winter months and it's a dark night from there. So the big question is now is about the quality of it. So they're saying it's not skillful. Well, it won't be skillful because of these conditions. And I think it's a poor excuse at times when they're blaming the ball and all this sort of thing yeah. from there. So, so yeah, it has to change. And, and, and I totally agree uh, with Martin from there. Yeah, the season has to start a little bit later from there. So we'll be making sure that the quality of players, what we have got, seeing the right skills in dry weather, then I think that's a, that, that's a situation. But, 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 but if you look at it, but, but the finals played in October anyway. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and everybody knows. I right. never we, we coined the phrase, don't we? Grand final weather pouring yeah. down with yeah, rain yeah. and cold. So yeah. are you saying if I we start in April? Yeah. If we start in April and you've got to finish in say September, how are you going to play all the fixtures? That's the question, isn't it? Well, you you create a league structure that that fits into that time frame. Right. You know, that's clearly what you've got to do. But I mean, I would I would play the grand final on the last Saturday in October, which is the night when the clocks go back. You know. Right. And, I, I think that would be a great time to do it if, if, if we started when the clocks go forward at the start of April. I mean, if we were doing that this year, for example, the opening weekend of the season would be the Easter weekend, yeah. which would be a great time to open the season. You get terrific crowds. You look at the crowds last weekend, the snow weekend, you know, Huddersfield 4,000 and odd, Salford 2,000 odd, Saints for the visit of Leeds even just got just over 11,000. You know, those crowds are really not that great, are mm -hmm. they? And it, it sort of confirms the point that Eddie Hearns made that Rugby league just doesn't seem to be, you know, pulling its weight at the moment in terms of crowd support. I don't think mm. so. You know, we need to do, we need to take some radical steps, in my view. And and you know, you've got to some sometimes face the fact that you what you're doing isn't working. Martin, as well, you know, one su suggestion I would put up. Uh, you mentioned it just bef uh, before we came on, is that uh, all the games again this weekend are on Friday nights. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have two games on television, or maybe one game, and then the rest, the rest are Sunday afternoons. At three o'clock, 
that's when the crowds will come back. Yeah. Well, it's some a, clubs it, obviously it, think Friday night's better. I mean, what? It's a big thing. I mean, Friday night's better for, for, for rugby so players, for coaches, I mean, yeah. all that side yeah. of things, because it gives them the weekend with the families. It, it, it just structurally it, works yeah. well. Um, it's okay for home fans as well. But if you if you look at the overall picture travelling, I mean, you, you've got all playing Salford. I was there on Friday. I was amazed how many Hull fans was there actually. Mm. But you know, t trying to get from Hull to Salford on a yeah. Friday if you're working, it's not even impossible. If you've got kids, you're not going to do it because you're never going to get home at a reasonable hour. So it does. S Sunday afternoon, um, commercially and, and for, for corporate and things like that, I think is the better time for, for playing. And it's not just that, Derek. You know, we're a sport that relies on a, a television contract mm -hmm. for, for the majority of its, you know, sponsorship funds, and and yet on Friday night. There's one game on television, Leeds versus Castleford. Four other games going up against it, mm. which is bound to reduce the television audience. And no other sport does that. Just to add to that, Martin, two of them are being played in Hull. Absolutely crazy. Which is another who, thing who, that... Who creates this fixture I, list? I don't, I've it, never understood. You know, Liverpool and Everton don't play at home at the same time, do they? I'm surprised the police allow it, Hull it, and no count yeah. to, actually. It's an impossible task, though, I have got to say, because like, everybody is a club, you get a, a sort of wish list where you can say what game you want to start with and, and, and various things. Then adding into the mix, you've got like our pitch gets relayed, other clubs have that kind of issue. Uh, there's all kinds of different things that people throw into the yeah. pot um, and whoever, I do feel sorry for whoever is sat there trying to make that into some any kind of sense, you know, it, it's almost mission impossible because you get one area right and then it doesn't work for somebody no. else and it, t to try and take, I mean obviously the sensible thing, you wouldn't want to all games would you, and Not you, really. you would, no, if no. you was doing it you think that's just nonsense. But it might well be. Well, you might play it, one on Friday and one on Saturday. You wouldn't play them both at well, the same you'd, time. You'd think that'd be better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just looking at the, the postponements and the abandonments, because this is one of those things that people base their opinion on whatever the outcome was. So, mm -hmm. if Michael Carter calls a game off halfway through, he gets slaughtered by some people, or not Michael Carter calls it off, the match commissioner calls yeah. it off. If Michael doesn't call the game off at midday, and it does, it, and it snows, he gets slaughtered. If he calls it off and then it doesn't snow, yeah. he gets slaughtered. So people's opinions are based on whatever the outcome was. Yeah. So you can make the right decision at the time with the information you've got and still get the wrong outcome. Yeah. But what do people make of Cass calling their game off early doors? I think and that, Wakefield letting it run and then it being abandoned after 27 it's got, minutes? The, the right thing to do is make a call early and, and then if it turns out to be wrong, it turns out to be wrong because yeah. you can't yeah. control it. You've got to base your decision at the time and, you know, I always got pushed to one o'clock. They said the, the ten o'clock. Yeah, they're good. as long as all the snows off the field, the pitch will be okay. We'll sure. revisit at one o'clock. Well, at one o'clock, Lee Centurion's players are five minutes from the stadium. Fans are already en route. So I think the sensible thing to do is just make an informed decision early morning yeah. and say, it doesn't look great. We're just going to have to pot it. And uh, everybody knows what they're doing. We saw differences, didn't we, uh, a couple of weeks back when the last bad weather hit us. Uh, Hulky RB Cass got called off, but then Holby Warrington went ahead despite some Warrington fans saying, why, why are you saying we should travel? Uh, yeah. you know, it, but it's, it's, it's very difficult, who, isn't it? It's not that easy to come to a, the right decision. But people need to make their plans, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And, and, you know, and, the, and the trouble is, even when you're playing a game, like, I mean, Wakefield were fantastic on Saturday, and, you know, Michael Carter was sweeping, you know, snow, sweeping yeah, it all yeah, off yeah. himself. Yeah. I mean, tremendous effort. But the trouble is, you're very rarely rewarded with a decent crowd in that sort of situation, because no. most people think it's going to be off. Yeah. So, you know, not, not that many people turn up. And, and then when you saw the... The snow during the game, I mean, it couldn't have carried on. Yeah, it was that, was that, that, that was a perfect game to be able to get away with throwing a few because, you know, yeah. the disciplinary <laughs> wouldn't have got yeah. much good um, footage on well, that. The game, right. the, game will be, the game will be replayed. Um, <laughs> Wakefield pointing out that they, they could have said, well, you can only come in for half price yeah, yeah, next sure. time. But I mean, free. They, they say come in free, which is an entirely reasonable and right thing to do. And I'm, I'm yeah. sure that every and, club and would have made the same decision. Yeah. I mean, it's just sensible and fair, isn't it, obviously? It, it is, but bear in mind, that for, from Michael's point of view, you know, he, he operates that club very, very well on a, on a tight budget and he does a great job. The, those costs have already been yeah. absorbed now for that game. Well, well should they replace him at... I'm going to give you a few examples in a minute. I'll come on to something a bit more contentious. But should they be replaying that bang on as soon as they can? Like, so should they have tried to replay yeah. it on Sunday or Monday night or Tuesday night this week and got it done? Well, if in, in a Challenge Cup circumstances, you have to. You have so, to for you? example, yeah. Featherstone and North Wales I'm are playing on I'm not sure about Tuesday. the logistics here, but I mean, it, it, yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it does, but you, when you're looking at how things pan out, it, you, you could actually think and take a view and think, you know what, it's better that we call this game off here because it's not mm. a good time to play right. these. I mean, yeah. the, we fell victim a little bit, and this brings us on a completely different subject, what could go crazy is, this dual registration thing, Leeds and uh, yeah. Catalan get called off and Featherstone turn up with four 
quality Leeds players against <laughs> us, right. and their middle dominates yeah, yeah, ours because yeah. they you yeah. know, um, you, you, if we play Featherstone in the next round of the Challenge Cup, but they've not got them, you're facing a different yeah, team. Yeah, 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 There's yeah, loads yeah. of factors about yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. But but just also, get, but, I ask you this: is right, right. The game was two 0 to Wakefield, right? Now, when it when the game is replayed, they're going to start at zero zero after no minutes. Yeah. So Wakefield are materially disadvantaged. Mm. Should the game should restart start after 27 minutes. <laughs> Actually, with, with, no, with 53 minutes to play at 2-0. I'm going to give you an example because some people think that's lunacy. It but is. that's what happened. <laughs> right. okay. so, so, it it's, so, it's so stupid that that's mm. exactly what they do in the Champions League, the biggest club competition in world sport. When Galatasaray played Juventus in 2013, there was a snowstorm and it was called off at 0-0 after 32 minutes in a group game. They came back the following day to play 58 minutes from 0-0. And right. if it had been 2-0 to Juventus, they'd have come back and played 58 minutes from 2-0 to Juventus. Yeah. 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 Galatasaray won. Here's another better one. In 2004, Real Madrid played Sociedad. It was one all with two minutes left plus stoppage time uh, and there was a bomb scare. They came back a month later to play two minutes plus injury time and Real Madrid won 2-1. Yeah, yeah. So should, is that it's fairer to argument. do that? Because yeah, I mean, 2-0 people think it doesn't matter, but say it was 30-0 to Wakefield yeah. Yeah, and they got yeah. to go back to 0-0. Yeah, I, I think in football, what you point out there, Rod, is it, it's so critical, isn't it? Like 2-0, it's a massive advantage yeah. Yeah. in football. 2-0 in rugby, mm. it's neither in or there, is yeah, it? But really? say it was 14-0 or 16-0 or 18-0. Yeah, well, they, 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 you know, there's a massive, this, there's an argument for that. Yeah. yeah. What if it had been 18-0 after an hour? Yeah, and they called it off. There's an argument for it, yeah. but yeah. You'd, you'd also think, is there any point us coming back for the last 20 minutes to play you again <laughs> yeah. to uh, a minus 18? You but know? also, yeah. well, you're, asking, yeah. you're, asking, you're asking the question. Well, so why is it stupid, Gary? Well, well, you're asking the question as well. Do they have to play the same? They have to play the ball same sides? No, you play whatever you've got. You can't get everything, everything the same. Can you? <laughs> well, well, this is what you're saying. That's where it falls down. That's where it falls down. That's near. You know, you've got. You've got. It's like saying you've got to pick the ball same seven teams. This is near to the same as possible. It might be dropped. No, it's, it's, still it's as near to the same it's, as possible. It's, it's an interesting it's, idea, Rob, but I doubt whether it's going to be brought in in rugby league. Well, yeah. you, know, you never know. You never know. Things have happened. Right. Right. Even, I've, even I've, Eddie I've, might I've, agree I've put, I've put it out there. I put it out yeah. there. I'm just saying that's what they do in the Champions yeah. League. In golf, if it gets abandoned, they go back and put the ball in the same place. They don't start the round again, Gary, do they? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Some of the golfers would like to, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, you're saying. three under par. You're not back to start the first tee. Right, I will see what happens. I'll be speaking to... The powers that be. So yeah. <laughs> right, now here's, here's another thing that, you know, this is something that one of Martin's hobby horses there. We've gone from one of my hobby horses to one of Martin's. What about kits, Martin? Well, right, now on, just to put it in context, we saw on the TV this week Saints playing Leeds, Saints in the iconic right, mm. with the red, red V. Leeds, though, not in the blue and amber, but in purple and black. Well, and then, and then the, the Huddersfield game as well the night before, wasn't it? Well, that was the one that concerned me more because Huddersfield and Hull KR were both playing in strips yeah. that, yeah. you know, from a distance looked pretty similar. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, the whole idea of a rugby league game, of, of any competitive sports game between two teams, is that you've got to be able to identify, you know, the, the difference between the two. And ideally, the two clubs, whatever they are, should, should be playing in their iconic colours. Yes. You know, Huddersfield, Claret and Gold, they're playing in Claret and Gold. Mm -hmm. Hull KR, they're the Robins, the Robin Redbreast. They, yes. they ought to have been playing in, <coughs> in their conventional shirts. Yeah. I know Derek will say, you know, that... Clubs have away shirts and they want to, you know, benefit from selling merchandise, right. you know, replica shirts and so on. But the thing is, sometimes wearing the away shirt just leads to situations like that at yeah. Huddersfield last yeah. Thursday. Well, so any, on, on those occasions, I'm interested wear the home shirt. A real good point there, Martin. Is there any evidence that by trying to punt out away shirts by wandering around with them in an away, in away game rather than your iconic kit, but yeah. that is of some commercial benefit to a club. Well, you, you do sell them, but the, the important thing here, Martin, is that the RFL determine what kit you're playing at a game. Yeah, yeah, the, they do. The kit directive yes. sent to yeah. you each week, so they say, you know, your principal kit or your, so don't your they, second. Don't but they understand so, when kits clash? Well, somebody's made a major hole there, because yeah, yeah. when I turned, tuned well, into that Huddersfield Lucky Air game, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. No, because, no. Well, know, there was a famous cup final recently that. when both Leeds and Warrington were playing in blue and uh, amber, yeah, weren't yeah, they? Or yeah, blue yeah. and primrose and blue, yeah. whichever way you want to look at it. Yellow and blue, essentially, wasn't it? You still get a lot of Fans, a, a lot of fans go to away games in the, their own colours. You know, they, they just they do prefer it. I think there's definitely an argument for whenever you can play in your, your own kit, you should. Yeah. But, the, but, but it's, it is just that element of fans. Which is presumably, away it's presumably, you know, why uh, Hull and Wigan, when they went to Australia and they wanted to say, "This is our iconic yeah. brand," we're in the 
in the black and white hoops Absolutely. and the German white hoops and everyone yeah. went, that's Holland Wigan. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, 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 I think that whole kit of irregular Super black kit. and white hoops yeah. is probably the greatest yeah, kit and most iconic kit we've ever seen in rugby yeah. league. You know, and back in the 1970s and 80s when Hull were really at their height, people all over the country were, were wearing that kit. And the problem was for the Hull directors, they hadn't patented it. Yeah. You know, so they weren't getting the benefit from or trademark. So why them, would, this is why I don't understand why Hull would want to change well, paying anything else. It. Well, no, you know, only like, Hull can um, answer that. It's like Brazil's iconic yellow kit, the All yeah, Blacks yeah. iconic yeah. All Absol Black kit. I mean, yeah. everyone knows what they are. It's all down to sales because if, 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 every year you're trying to reinvent the wheel, trying to stick to your traditional colours like us with mm. cherry and white hoops, but changing it so that somebody needs to buy another one, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then we go back and we have it's a retro color. shirt, don't we? Yeah, well, I, I think, uh, to be honest with you fellas here, yeah, all right, mm, I'd like to go on a little bit about Performance. I don't think kit makes you perform pretty, pretty poorly. No, Gary, let's, let's Gary, take Gary, let's take, hold on, 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 hold kit they sure. were wearing in a couple of minutes if you'll rejoin us on Rugby League Back Chat. Welcome back to the Ark in Headingley for Rugby League Bat Chat. You're enjoying it, aren't you? You'll enjoy this even more because Gary Schofield is going to go on one of his rants. <laughs> so we were just saying before the break, weren't we, that <laughs> kits don't decide things, they don't affect performance. Although Manchester United famously changed from their grey kit at Southampton once, didn't they, Scott, when they couldn't see where they were passing to? So Sir Alec, Fer Sir Alec Ferguson... And in, interestingly enough, Huddersfield's away kit is grey this year. Right, well, there you are. Well, that might be the explanation. Right, you <laughs> yeah. want to go on a rant? What do you want to rant about? Well, Huddersfield's performance at OKR? Okay, oh, listen, yeah, listen, as we mentioned, kits don't make you play better or, or bad, but... Uh, right. First of all, you know, for 12 minutes, Huddersfield, Huddersfield were all right. Right. But then for the next 68 minutes, to be honest with you, they were pathetic. Absolutely yeah. pathetic. But let's it took nothing away from Lucky Sarovas. They were outstanding, and as I say, and as I've said a few times before, you know, uh, how you train is how you play, how you play is how you train. When, and when you saw them try score from there, they were straight off the training paddock. Mm. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit different what I've seen OKR okay, play a little bit under Tim Sheen because Tim seems to be a little bit turning it back on the inside, play a little bit more structured Australian play. Mm -hmm. But the way they played OKR okay, on Thursday night, if they keep that consistency, I know the next three games they've got Saints, Wigan and the derby against Hull, uh, uh, Hull themselves. So if they get the consistency going, they could be knocking on the door. They could be knocking on the right. door. I, the th I, thought, that game, I right. thought that game demonstrated why Tim Sheens is a damn good coach. Yeah, right. You know, it was, it, they, it was a really smart game plan. I, I, right. I, I thought they outclassed Huddersfield. And, and it's really interesting that this Friday night, Hull Cow right, so play St Helens. So okay, that, so on, 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 on Gary Scofield's one match form, they've beat another poor team and suddenly they're going to be in the top eight. <laughs> I, I'd be, if anyone wants to give <laughs> me Rob, even Rob, money, Rob, even Rob, money, Huddersfield to Rob, be, uh, I didn't, say, I, Rob, I didn't say they would make the top eight. I said if they get the consistency, they have a chance of knocking on the door right. of the top eight because right. Catalans are going to freeze bottom. Huddersfield are going to be in there. Witness right. that they may fall down from Salford from there. So if they get the consistency, they could right. be knocking on the door. But by the way, by the way, let right. me just say here, you talked about a rant here. Let's no, talk about well, well, we, 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 we Huddersfield Giants. Right. They are absolutely pathetic. No, when, when, they are pathetic. Right, okay. They are they, they are pathetic. <laughs> they are because Gary, when you look when you look when you look at when you look at that Warrington when you look to that performance Warrington oh Rob please Warrington beat Wigan. 
Yeah, yeah well, well, after the comeback yeah. from Australia. Oh, okay. Well, 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 everybody, well, everybody will make excuses. Don't ask him what he thinks of Lee Williams. If you think Huddersfield did a good side, well, I'll tell you what. You better get to a well-known opposition. What do you think of Lee? They've got one win out of six in the league. He's here. He does. They're pathetic. And that's the division below. Dillon knows that himself. We need a new kit. 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 There's some evidence that playing in red, actually, is maybe beneficial. That's why, like, Liverpool and Manchester United. There's some there's some psychological evidence we, of that. we had a kit right. clash on Sunday because both kitchens was just yet black right, you can see yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right right so i'll tell you what's interesting because um a lot of people thought that rick stone would have left huddersfield after that debacle against swinton in the challenge cup last year remember when they got beat yeah. at home by swinton but that he stayed and they and ken david made the decision to stick with what he had and they actually then rallied didn't they and mm. then finished in the finished in the, above, in the yeah. top eight and, and they might do yet. reasonably strongly yeah uh, and they and they may do yet so they've got the roster the, the, if you look at the two rosters huddersfield rosters are a lot better than okr's in my opinion but, but they, they when, didn't but, turn up that night but when you look at okr's performance on on last thursday night i think you've got to say if they performed like that every week they're probably would be a yeah. top eight side you know but as Gary says it's consistency isn't it you know whether whether they can do that against St Helens this Friday yeah, night they, is going to be the big test they, for them they won't. they've got a load to I watched OKR at Salford and, and Salford were marching 70 metres yeah, yeah, yeah. on yeah. through the middle I don't think they, yeah. I, I th I th yeah. they, they so know it's a remarkable they, turnaround they, they, they know they need some players I mean they was on yeah. the phone to me when they thought we were dead and buried trying to see what they could pick off us yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, if you believe all the... Well, they still have to Louis, aren't they, Robert Louis? Well, still trying yeah, to I mean, there's, there's still going to be sales from Salford, isn't he, I'm sure there will be sales from He played great for Salford, Salford against Salford. Listen, what, what, what I'm saying is here, Ulki Sarova is in, in, in a far better state than what we're You're saying that Ulki are going to finish with Huddersfield, are you? Oh, yeah. yeah Ulki are going to finish with Huddersfield. Ulki are will finish with Huddersfield. Will they really? They will indeed. Right, OK. They will. Right. They will. I would say the odds are... I'm marking them. They will finish above Huddersfield. You can mark that down. I'm on Rod's side here. You can mark that down. You can mark that down. You can't say Gary's I'm not often wrong with my predictions. No, no, not often, Gary. Not wildly wrong, anyway. Right. Where did you say London would finish in the Championship this year? Let's move on. Let's move on. The thing is, right... Tenth, by the way. If you believe that the rumours already... And I remember saying this to Tony Smith in the off-season. As soon as a coach gets under pressure, you're going to be linked with every job because obviously Lev Warrington is the, the absolutely preeminent coach not in a job at the moment. And some rumours now saying that Tony Smith he, might go back to Huddersfield. He's not interested in coming back in rugby. I can tell yeah, you that. Yeah. I mean, we, well, he's involved at Burnley. We've, isn't he? We, yeah, we, yeah, we've we've obviously been you know testing the water up what's out there. There isn't a lot. You know, Paul Anderson's got the night's job. Yeah. Tony Smith's not uh, interested. You know, there's there's not you a did, lot. You of did get the feeling there. when he walked away from Warrington last year, he just had enough. He's, he's, he's done with the game. He, yeah. you know, he, he doesn't like how the game's going. He did, doesn't like he the way it's out, didn't he? About run. that, he yeah, made yeah. it clear what he, his thoughts yeah. are. Um, and there's, you know, there's so many things in there that make it difficult for coaches. You know, all this, uh, you know, the dual registration things. Sure. You're trying to plan for a team. You don't know exactly yeah. what what you're going to get. Exactly. Uh, right. It's difficult. Injuries determine uh, results. It, it's a very pressurised job. Yeah, it is. And it isn't a big paying job. And he's been doing it for yeah. a long time. Long time. You know. he, he, may, he has been linked with Catlands before. That might happen again. Oh, what I'm interested. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're an owner that's had to make coaching changes. Mm -hmm. What? prompts you to make a change or not make a change what's what's the thought process of an owner when when things are happening you, and you're thinking do <coughs> i change don't i change you, i mean on neil jukes he made the change not me I, yeah. I went in there and rallied differently because yeah he knew you know neil wants what's best for the club yeah uh, and he knew that, that, that it weren't working and we needed another voice but we were better with him in there until right. we got that other voice and that was the kind of plan but you know the fans in the end you know made it untenable for him and, and yeah. he had to move on and we're in a worse position as a result of that and, and now it's even more difficult um, than, than it would have been but I think really <coughs> your players kind of let you know you know when a, when a player's lost in a group or, or a coach loses um, a group of players and, and his voice isn't carrying he'll know himself if he's a decent guy yeah. you know, he won't stay in there then sure. and your players will let you know and you know I communicated with the senior ones and mm. uh, and, and what they thought but I think in the end, it's a results-driven uh, yeah. industry. Fans vote with the feet, and as much as you say they don't run the club, they, they, they do have a, a, a big part of it. And but are you always, you've sense. always got to be in the position. It's not just a case of you know saying goodbye to somebody. Mm. But you've always got to then get somebody else in. You've, you've, and, and you know, as you say, there may just not be people around. There's, there's, no, and there's, there's, there's also the cost people don't think about. You know, if you've yeah. got a coach on sixty grand a year. <clears throat> and you decide to pot him, he's got to be paid, he's got a contract, so you've got to pay him anyway. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to pay the new yeah. guy coming yeah. in, who, who pays for these things. So, yeah. mm. And then it's, <clears throat> who, you know, who you're going to bring in, is it a better position? We're yeah. in a precarious well, when position. When Brian Noble went to Wigan, 
he famously said, I understand that if things go badly, they can't sack 25 players, so they'll sack me, <laughs> right? Which is about right. But the fact is, changing the players is more likely to get better results than changing the coach, isn't it? But it's just almost impossible well, to keep yeah, it's, putting it's, the cleaners to the playing staff. Sometimes it can be one or two players that, that are causing, uh, that cause a problem in a group, and you, you can just freshen them, get rid and bring somebody but in, but and it's it can interesting. change it. You know? if, if you look at the evidence, you know, say from last season, you know, midway through the season, Saints brought in a new coach yep. and that worked brilliantly. Yeah. Catalans brought in a new coach, Steve McNamara, and that's just work, just about worked in terms of keeping them in Super League last year. But it, it's not working he, so far. We told you not to mention the million pound game, Martin. We told you not to mention the million pound game. But also, but also <laughs> as well, did it, did it, what, you, what you did as well mid last season, and say, I'm sure you, you've asked, been asked a question many times. You brought Kieran Cunningham in as a director of rugby. Mm. What sort of influence and what? What, what does he have at, well, at least? Kieran got in, I mean, obviously, um, I, I brought Kieran in as a mentor, really, for Neil and to help him, and that right. was always my philosophy, because yeah. let's not forget, you know, Neil only ever worked under Paul Rowley, without being disrespectful to him, he's never coached Super League or, or anything, or worked under any big Super League uh, coaches, you know, so he, he's kind of self-taught himself as Paul, and he's, he's doing well for himself. Mm -hmm. So Dukes had only ever worked under that. He got us in Super League, we, we, he had a good dig in there as well. Mm. And I always thought if I was going to do anything, it was bring somebody in as a director of rugby to help him and to mentor him and make him into something better. Kieran um, obviously couldn't do a lot at, at, at the end of it. So it was then a case of we had a plan A and a plan B and, and there was players going even if we stayed in Super League. So, you know, um, did we get rid of too many? Could well be that we did. Um, you know, so Kieran looked at that. We made decisions together on who to recruit with Neil. And, and that was what we all agreed was, was the best thing to do. And then he got involved in the, the coaching side with Neil, uh, running you know, the, the attack side of it. Yeah. But you know, if you look at the games, we, we scored enough points in, uh, before the Halifax game to win each game mm. uh, and, and conceded too many. If you score 30 points in a rugby Should game and you lose, you've got to have a look at yourself. Absolutely. Haven't you, you know? yeah. But the interesting thing about your club this year is you, you've actually played all the other top teams for the most part, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. You know, and, and I, 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 I mean, this weekend you played Dewsbury. I'd, I'd hate to say Dewsbury were an easy touch. I don't think no, they will be. No. But currently you know, fifth, they're, they're probably not fifth as, and currently uh, not quite a, yeah, four not, points better off than the least centurions. They are, they're, they're with not a, game not a bad side, but, yeah. but but you know the fixture list is looking a bit yeah, not we, quite so tough <laughs> yeah, for you over we, the next few weeks. We, we've you know if you look at our start, I mean Toronto, everything they touched turned to gold. We was we was twelve nil up and, yeah. and, and we we imploded. We 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 beat Batley. We, we you know uh, we go up to Barra on a on, on a, a plow wet cow field. Um, Barrow haven't we, lost at home for two years. Yeah, I mean, they, they play yeah. that pitch perfectly. Paul yeah. Crow, Drew with there. Toronto, did they he, not? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Crested did it. He'd done a great job. He's Their a, game he's plan a, was... I'll just say he's a good coach. Yeah, he's, he's, he's solid. He's His game coach, plan so. against us yeah. was outstanding. You know, yeah. and, and, mm. and, they, and they got that win, and that kind of damages are a little bit to loose. I mean, we're beating them 20 points to four, I think. With the, the, they're playing with 12 men, um, and we caved in. Mm. Featherstone were beating, we caved in. We've got that ugly uh, win there at Batley. We, we won, you know, our bottom point was 28 0 down at half time at Halifax. Yeah. I'm listening on the radio and I'm thinking, has, has my club just died? Mm. You know, mm. Is this the end mm. of it? Mm. And I listened. The second half, they defended six sets on the line. They won the second half. They didn't turn the game around, but they won the second half. And I thought, yeah. well, that's the start. And that's what we took into but, Batley. You, right. know? So, you it, see, also, also <coughs> as well, it's like when you look at Super League now, the way that Wayfield and Casford are, they're a target. Your players there did it then. Each week, they have got to perform 8 out of 10 every week because you're a target. Everybody wants to play yeah. well against you. 100%. Can the, can the players handle that pressure? Yeah, they can. They, they, they're good enough. Look, I'll tell you what's going on. The, the bottom line is, I'm going to say, Lee's wage bill paper. is right at the top of well, the thing and you should be getting better it's results. Point, it's 1.67 right. million. So, so right? wage bill equates to performance. And a team on 200 yeah. Ks yeah. doing us. Yeah. yeah, so well, that shouldn't well, be happening. I'll tell you what I think has no. gone wrong here. We've got some quality overseas players, Super League players. I think I put a tweet out one time. Every player that's playing for us today has played either NRL or Super League. First time ever. Right. We've we've competed well against Wigan and Saints, full strength sides in warm up matches, sure. yeah. very well. Um, our guys have thought, yes, you know, all we've got to do now, getting the eights, will certainly beat the bottom sides in Super League. You cannot underestimate the championship. No, no, no. I, I, I heard Neil Duke say yeah. that in video reviews. Guys, you cannot underestimate anybody here. The pitches are, are more difficult, the, the refereeing slower, the rooks are slower, the tens are short. It's damned hard. Yeah. It's a different kind of rugby. You've got to switch on. And we haven't. And I think now they kind of got the message there at Batley. They, yeah. they had a page full of excuses they could have given us to yeah. not win that game. They didn't take the easy option. They toughed it out. They defended down that hill. 
nil Batley. The first yeah. time in 30 years yeah. that we've not conceded a try at Batley. You yeah. know, I think they've they've finally turned a well, corner. And the really interesting thing is, Derek, that you've only got to finish in the top four. If you finish fourth, yeah, fourth is fine for me. You know, the That's qualifiers, you all start on zero. Yeah. If it was you a know, normal so league, it's, 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 you'd yeah, be banging be a the problem. car here, yeah. wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, you've got to get in the top four. Well, it's a great, good point by Martin. You've got 17 games left to play. Three losses, Max. Right, no, so you think you've got to win 14 out of 17 yeah, you, at yeah, least? Yeah, if you look at the last three years, right. Fax have what got in on seven and, and Featherstone got the moment, in on eight there, there are, At the moment, there are four teams in the top four, obviously, that mm -hmm. have... That have <laughs> stupid... <laughs> what? Is that a dart star, right? <laughs> Yeah, it must be, there's a dart star. <laughs> Where that came from. You need to change uh, your kit. Right. right, London have lost none. <laughs> Toulouse and Featherstone have lost one and Toronto have lost one and a half. Mm -hmm. We use the drop. Right. So you've got a lot of ground there's a lot of ground to make yeah. up, obviously. What I'm in, what I'm interested in, Derek, is that you know as well as I do, there's been a lot of rumours going around that Derek Bowman's gonna fold his hand and, and walk away from Lee. What would happen if Lee didn't make the top four and therefore couldn't get back into Super League this year? Would you go again for another crack at 2019 or would you say, well, oh, that's it, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm out? It, 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 it wouldn't be possible because it, quite, unless somebody else came in who, who, who wanted to do it, because quite simply, we're, we're, this year, you know, we get 750, we get 500 yeah, yeah. parachutes, yeah, so it's yeah. 1.25. My money going in as well, I gave them a budget of 1.65, which we've gone slightly over, which, which is fine. Yeah. Um, never give any thought to this not making the four. Mm. Um, I, I planned that if we didn't make Super League, we lose the 500k, we should still be in the one or two spot, we get sure. 750. Um, I can I can commit then to what's needed to go on the second year of the contracts. Now, people ain't coming on one-year deals from Australia, so pretty much you know 80% of that squad are on two-year uh, deals. So next year, the club's committed to 1.67 spend on players. If it doesn't make the four, it'll only have 200,000 uh, right. central funded, and there's no get-out clauses in contracts. Right, so mm. just for clarity so, here, if so Lee Centurions don't make the top four, mm. then they'll be looking for a new owner in 2000. Uh, 19. The, the, the You'll be selling up. What I will be doing, well, the thing I was going to buy well, it. But, yeah, well, it's still, look, it's, the no, pub's still it, worth it, something, isn't it, obviously? It, look, it, it can't, it's out, of, it's out of my depth to, to do that the following year. Right, I, mean, yeah, I wouldn't financially support that. that. Yeah. So um, it would, I would have to be very responsible. I've thought this through, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it would be a case of, you know, certain players would get different clubs and would and build something that could uh, be run without any contractual obligations over and above what it can support I'd write off my uh, loan account yeah, so yeah. that it, it's it's not the yeah. it's not old um, I took we turn it into a donation and, and benefit from the tax yeah, yeah, side of it and yeah. and uh, let somebody else come and take it forward with a clean right. slate but that's, that's, that's that, what I'd have to happen. I mean it's really fascinating to hear what Derek's saying I think but it does illustrate the instability that's caused by this structure that yeah. we've got at the moment. You know, and, and you, but you any structure with promotion and relegation can be said to do yeah, that. Yeah, but in, in particular, promotion and relegation from a full-time to a part-time competition. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's <coughs> you know, we've always said before that, you know, the gap, say, in football between the Premiership and the Championship is not that massive. You know, you've still got massive clubs in the Championship. Yeah. If, if, you know, whoever goes down this year, say if West Brom go down, yeah. they're still going to be playing games against... Leeds United and other yeah. massive clubs like that. You know, in rugby league, it's different. It's just, you know, you, you, you go from playing against sort of Wigan Saints and Leeds yeah, to, to playing right. against in, in front of crowds of 700. Mm. Okay. You know, and that, right. that's just... It, it, by the way, it, we'll, come, we'll hold that thought, Derek, because we'll come yeah. back to that in, in a couple of minutes because we've just got to take another break. But it's interesting to see how the structure might pan out with the new CEO, we believe to be the new CEO, and that'll be Rob Elston. We'll be coming back to talk about that sure. on Rugby League Batch Out.
Welcome back to Rugby League Bat Chat coming from the Ark here in Headingley. We were talking just before the break or hinting at talking about the new CEO, what might happen to Rugby League. It looks as though that the new CEO of Super League will be Rob Elston, who is currently at Everton in a similar role. And uh, people saying, why does he want to leave Everton? Well, there's a, Everton are going to be looking, I think, for their fourth manager in about two years in the, in the, in the summer, if you believe the words that Sam Allardyce might be his way out. And there's all sorts of trouble in uh, Everton. It's probably a very, very difficult job up there. Will it be any easier, though, Derek, being the CEO of Super League for Rob Elston, if he <laughs> takes that role on? I should have it. I've met Rob at our club. He's, uh, he's been a guest there a couple of times. Yes. So he's, he's a good keen, man, yeah. Yeah, he's keen on his rugby. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know his, his, his business skills, but obviously if he's headed up an organisation like Everton, you'd like to think he's, yeah. uh, he's got some good business acumen. But... I, I think it's a massive gig. It's a real tough gig. My time in, mm. in Super League, they sat around the table with, you know, twelve, you know, intelligent guys who were all running their own clubs and, and self-interest and genuine interest of, of the sport as well. And trying to manage through that and, and the different levels that you've got is to get a decision or everybody agreeing on something is just. Derek's really made a great point there because, you know. and this is what we're, we're talking about: Barry and Eddie Hearn, who basically run individual sports it's a lot easier to control 128 individual darts players than it is to control yeah. 12 Super League clubs as Derek says all with their in Lee have got a different interest from Wigan who've got a different interest yeah. from Leeds who've got a different interest from Hull KR haven't they well put it this not way not that easy is it if there were only two Super League clubs and they were headed by Ian Lennon <laughs> on the one hand and Gary Hedrington on the other you'd have a massive <laughs> very good very good. Go, 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 anywhere. go anywhere no, 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 go no. anywhere so, so, so the key thing for Rob Elston is diplomatic skills it mm. seems to me is somehow got to persuade everybody that they're all you know singing from the same hymn sheet and that's, that's never been done it's never as long as I've known Super League you know yeah. there have been millions and millions of different viewpoints arguments and rows and so on it's still not I mean that we met week after week I think six weeks on the run about the new structure how it should be we're going mm. to this chucking different things in and, and I've never been as frustrated in my life. No, and no. after six weeks of it, mm. we're yeah, then out yeah, of the picture. Yeah. And even now, partway through this season, yeah. I'm speaking to the Super League owners that, that, that I've met at Salford's yeah. games, and then they're none the wiser. Yeah. They're still no nearer but, to deciding what to do. But the thing is, Martin, the yeah. harmony was achieved in 1992 in the Premier League, what, what became the Premier League, yeah, when yeah. Man United, Liverpool, Spurs, Everton and Arsenal, the so-called big five of the day. That was driven by the big clubs, well, they, they, they were mm. the big five of the day. Yeah. Man City and Chelsea weren't in that group at the time. Yeah. They, they now are one of the big clubs. But... There's a this discussion. I mean, our, our friend Danny Lockwood from League Weekly said that there's going to be a civil war. And, and can you have a CEO <laughs> of Super League and one of Rugby League? But there's a CEO of the, well, executive chairman of the Premier League, Richard Scudamore, a CEO of the FA, Martin Glenn, a CEO of the Football League, Sean Harvey, and, and non exec chairman of the, of the Football League, none other than Ian Lennigan. Yeah. So those three bodies seem to work together. And football, so what's the yeah, problem here? What's football the problem now here? does seem to work well, but back in 1992, the big oh, clubs. There was bloodshed. The Premier yeah, League yeah, yeah, by, by threatening to break away. Yes, yes, they did. Yeah. But the trouble is, in rugby league, I don't think the clubs, the big clubs, can threaten to break away because the sport's not big enough. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, if if there was a breakaway, you know, it had it had killed the game. Yeah. In my view, I mean, I was talking to um, somebody who was a potential candidate for the RFL chief executive right. role recently. And he was saying that, you know, he wouldn't be, if, if there's a breakaway, if, if the Super League clubs... Name names, Martin. It, well, <laughs> a, 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 a guy called Mark Evans. Right. Okay. Who is, who is, um, who, who was the chief executive at Melbourne Storm. Yes, yes, yes. Who is the, who, who was the chief executive at Harlequin's Rugby yeah, League Club. That's where I remember. For many yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Great Rugby League fan yeah. and, and a very, very smart, intelligent guy certainly would, would, would have an interesting impact at the RFL. Right. But he said that basically if the Super League clubs did what Ian Lennigan wants them to do, then he thinks the game would be dead in 10 years. Right. You know, he, he, he just wouldn't want to be involved. Important in to remember, basis. though, that football wasn't in anything like the state it's in now in 2018, in 1992. And the late 80s was a bad time for it football. Was you know, and gate, if you, people want to go back and look at the gates of games in the early 90s, they're tiny compared to what they are now. Yeah, so, yeah. so football. It's been a massive success. Yeah, yeah the, the Premier League has been a huge success, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the big problem is, and I'm experiencing it now. Super League is a different game of rugby to Championship yeah. rugby. They are two different things, and to try and operate a Super League side in the, it's like having uh, one of Marwan's race horses running the milk tomorrow pulling a, a cart and expecting it to do it miles better than the cart horse that's used to doing it. Right. Well, it ain't gonna because it doesn't do that. Right. Yeah. You know? and, and 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 it's a struggle. And but the, the the thing is, Super League clubs are gonna uh, pull away. Yeah. Uh, and it, and it yeah. is concerning. But, but there has to be, the, the, you know, people go on about Ian Lennigan, Ian Lennigan, Ian Lennigan, and there's more to it than that. But 
you know, Ian's own words out of his mouth when I sat there said, you know, we do have to show some responsibility oh, to yes. the championship. And it was even mentioned about bringing that into whatever the proposal is. Um, do, do the, do the, I'm going to use this, lesser clubs, to, for want of a better phrase, do they need to follow Ian Lennigan like the lesser clubs in football followed Man United, Liverpool, Tottenham, Everton and Arsenal? and say, hang on a minute, we're going to follow it, because at the end of the road, there'll be more money in the game, like there is now mm. in football, and even though West Brom and Middlesbrough and Barnsley and Bristol City get less of a slice of the pie, the pie is now miles bigger. Would that happen in rugby league, if they listen to Mr Lennigan? I don't think it would do necessarily, because I think, you know, if, if the game was seen to split in half, I think it would do so much damage, and I think it would affect the income that the clubs would get from... Right. Sky or from any other potential broadcaster. It, you know that's that's the problem. It, there's, there's that way of looking at it, but it, you've got to be positive and you've oh, got yes. to, you've got to drive away. So I, I think you know the, the Sky deal at the moment is restricting the championship significantly. I know that there's the, the money that that comes into it overall, um, but there's there's so much more that clubs could do individually. So if if they were cut adrift and didn't get that significant amount of funding, there's other ways you can then look at using what benefits you have got you know i think bradford uh, and york put a game on facebook and yeah, got yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of viewers so there's, yeah. there's the potential of, of of that of streaming so you've well, what, well what they set their own little governing body out of the championship they've all signed the deal from there they're all sticking yeah. together aren't they from there so they've all set up the, their own uh, like a little governing body which i'm led to believe is, is led by uh, kevin nicholas at yeah. mm. but also as well the the, the other issue right, is fair enough. that the uh, the new guy's going to come as the chief executive of super league say for instance he has a meet with eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn goes to the Chief Executive Super League, then he goes to Lennigan and Gary Everton and the rest say, right, listen, this is what Eddie Hearn proposing, mm -hmm. I agree with that, this is what's happening. Then what you'll get then from the Super League Chief Executives, in Lennigan, McManus and all the guys, is, yeah. oh, no, no, we're not happy about that. You tell him, this is the way we want it. So all you're going to get is arguments and mm -hmm. debates, and it's not all good for the good of the game, because it's all the self-interest. That's what it's been in the league. Part of the problem with our sport is that we do have these regular meetings with club owners, and they do, what do we have you know, go, what do we have go to each, each, nothing, nothing each other hammer and tongs. Mm. For example, you know, as I understand the way the NFL works in America, yep. they appoint a chief executive. Yep. He gets on with a job. He's got total power has, over yeah. the clubs, and they have an annual meeting yep. once a year. Correct. And if he's made a complete hash of it, they sack him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If he's done a good job, they carry on with him. Mm. Yeah. But while the he's there, the clubs the do what he says. Right. The league and dictates that's the, the clubs. That's yeah. what yeah. happens in the, the NFL the, and the NBA the and all those. Yeah. 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 Um, and in any successful competition, you'll find that's the case. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, the league dictates. In absolutely. The, yeah. Yeah. But you're not going to get in the league, are you? Well, you're not gonna it, get we, we, we need to. We, yeah, I agree, We need to move to that situation. Self-interest, is it's a big word, but I mean, I was faced with a situation there um, at that critical vote, um, you know, we, we knew we'd then been relegated. Um, I'm relying on the RFL because I'm going to be back the in the championship. This is the vote to support Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basic, and, what you and, would call a we, coup, Derek? Would you well, call it a coup? We, we, we was the, we, you know, it was you eight. You were one of the nine. It was either, it was either eight, four or, or nine, nine three. three. And, and I made it nine, three. Yeah. But I, and, and I don't mind putting that out there. But, oh, but, it, but I, you know, my reasoning behind doing that was and, and I that was a real difficult place for me to be because I know I'm coming in needing the RFL in the championship yeah. here yeah. Um, but I'm also knowing that the, the Super League guys are, are looking at, at breaking and that potentially at that point in time it was 14 teams and that we was favoured as being one and, and yeah. that was why the parachute yeah. was decided be sure. before it was known but it was linked right, so, this, so this, whoever this, did this, go this, down this, could this, stay strong you, you know. it's great because you've, you've actually come out there and said I, I voted for this that's great but it's a, it's a cloak and dagger thing it so, is that's so, the problem so why that's the this problem is, so why, can't, why don't they just allow what's, what, what's the secrecy here why don't they allow the media into the meeting and just report and, and make it an open vote what's mm -hmm. the, why, why is it all this cloak and dagger what, yeah. what's going on here I, the I, House of Commons it's an open vote I can I, see who my MP voted for so yeah, what's the problem I don't why people have a problem about which way they vote. Um, I don't think well, it's not the media so much, into it's, it. It's, it's not just the way they vote. It's so it's just that, you know, the, I mean, this le letter that Ian Lennigan sent out in yes, October yes, last yes. year, you know, we all eventually got a copy of it. But, right, the, yeah. but the fact is, it, it needs to be out in, it's got to be transparent. Yep. You know, whatever Ian's plans are, and I'm sure uh, there's a lot of merit in some of the things he's proposing, but let's see what the plan, why be secretive about it? I don't it? know, yeah, yeah. why I be secretive the, about the, it? The, 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 I think the issue was, with, as we was going through it all, 
it was the, the, the you know they kept say using the word transparency regarding the RFL and now the money split that comes well, in for him. Yeah. They keep talking about transparency and, and involving stakeholders like supporters and then keep all the decisions secret. I mean, it can't, it can't be both, yeah. can it? No, no. It can't be transparent and then then be secretive about the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Can you? Well, I mean, the, anyway. the key thing for me in, in all of that with my decision was I, I just did what would have been right for Lee would have probably to have voted against it or abstained really because we was going relying on the uh, oh, RFL, RFL. Yeah. but obviously I didn't also want to uh, you know the 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 well, well, this was, sort of this was the, yeah. the big thing that made my, my decision easier in yeah. the end was I knew which way Neil would vote right. so if I'd have blocked it then one month later, 28 days is recalled once Lee's out. I, right, I've handed my shirt to OKR. Okay. Yeah. They redo the thing and he does it. Right. And all I've done is annoy Delayed the other the thing, yeah. Super League owners yeah, yeah. who, who, who I want to try and work with. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure we'll come back to that discussion in weeks to come because I'm sure this is something that's going to go rumbling and rumbling and rumbling on for, for weeks, if not months ahead. Um, just want to talk about um, one of the news stories from this week, which is Josh Charnley coming back uh, to Rugby League, having gone to sale at the back end of 2016, uh, coming back to Warrington. Uh, won three grand finals, two Challenge Cups with Wigan, was Super League's top try scorer in 2012 and 2013. But at Sale, he made 32 appearances and scored four tries. Which, if you compare that with the uh, Denny Solomona, mm. dare I mention his name in a rugby league environment, uh, who scored 23 tries in 35 appearances. Mm. Just generally, what, what, what do people think about um, Josh Charlie coming back to Super League? Well, yeah. it's not worth time rugby union, has it? Not the, really. Uh, I no. think when he went, we all said, we'll see, see how quick he is when he comes back. Yeah. Some said 12 months, two years, so it's been 18 months. Uh, Warrington, do they really need a winger? It looks like Martin Russell's out of favour from there, so the way yeah. Warrington yeah. are playing, uh, what will he bring to them? Well, he certainly can finish. He's proved himself that he's a quality winger, so if they do get the right service to him, yeah, he'll score him a few tries. But an interesting one, is that why did Wigan want him back? Because everybody who's left Wigan to go to Rugby Union or the NRL, they've always seemed to want him back. I know Wigan have got some quality wingers from there, so it's an interesting one that Wigan did want him back. Wing, too but many wingers, haven't they? Well, yeah, they've well, got they have, some yes. quality yeah. wingers. Yeah. Marshall, yeah. Got Burgess, but everybody seems to want Davies. If you leave Wigan, everybody seems to want to go back from there. It's an interesting one for Warrington. But it's a smart signing for Warrington in one sense. I think Derek pointed out earlier that, you know, it, it doesn't count on the salary cap. No, that's correct. So that's, that's you know, that's a smart piece of business in a sense. Yes. As, as long as he delivers the goods. I mean, I've, I've got a friend of mine who's watched him quite a lot in, since he's been playing rugby union Sound. and he insists that he's you know played a lot better than many people perhaps give him credit for so you know and he's confident that he he will come back as, as a very good winger still mm. but it is true isn't it that a lot of players who've been in rugby union come back and well, come they don't seem as good and they've been they, they seem to have lost a bit they seem to have lost something yeah. I, I don't know why that yeah. is but most yeah. of them that have come back from rugby union have not been as not good as, good as, as they when were. they left now yeah. that might be an ageing thing, I have yeah. no idea. But yeah. there seems to be something that's they just is lost it, that Maybe edge. the training's is different, maybe they lost their edge, yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's a tough kid, is Charlie, though, and he, he he gives you a lot coming out of yardage. You know, well, the game, the, the, game the way it's played yeah. now, you want tough wingers who are almost like a, a, another middle that's yeah. coming out of the, yeah. but have got the flair at the other end. So I haven't seen any, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Union, I don't really watch it, I haven't followed no. it. I, I, I don't know whether, whether he's been getting in the side or or what's going on. And, and on the Wigging side, it's always saying the. Uh, sometimes it can be the manner in which you've left a club as to whether they want you uh, well, uh, to come back. But we're going to have got know. four wingers, you know. Yeah, they I got mean, got they don't know what to do with them. No, they've got really. too many. Yeah, they can't keep them all up. No. They're struggling to keep their wiggins happy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Sooner or later, if you're be. out of the team, you're going to think, well, I'll, I'll go somewhere well, else. Well, particularly when yeah. Manfred is back. That's another you know, one, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. Terrific yeah. winger, in my opinion. Sean's happy at that because he wants competition for places. Yeah, but the players are. It doesn't matter. Sean's not bothered about that. As long as he's got competition for places, that's what Sean wants. Yeah, sure. The cross code thing. Do you think that will actually die out completely? Because ones that go across tend not to be successful. Solomon is an exception, and ones that come back again don't seem to be successful when they come back. I so think it's will, will that die out, I or, think or will money a dictate? Duck. I think it's virtually mm. a dead duck now. But what rugby union are trying to do is is pick players at the age of sixteen and seventeen. Yeah. Now you know they're up scouting in rugby yeah. league areas to try and get them to sign on at that age. Mm. You know, and, and offering them big money. And you know, for for young kids. You know the minimum wage in rugby union is probably higher than yeah. it is in, in in our sport. So yeah. that, that's did you, that's did you find that a, I found that at all as a problem as a as an owner of a, a super league club that rugby union clubs are getting your kids before you can get yeah, them. Or, or well, we're Rod, we're not picking? we're not really delving in that end of the market right. are we, at the moment because yeah. we're not running the academies and yeah, the yeah, scholarships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I do hear that it is something that's that's posing a little bit of a problem. And Martin says the money's a massive. Yeah. Difference. But you look at Eng the England rugby union side now. Owen Farrell. Yeah. George. Uh, uh, George Ford, Ford. Mm. both played for you know under 16s rugby league, didn't they? Up, up, up to that point, and then got 
poached by the other code. So, you know, it's a threat that we need to be aware of, yeah. and I'm not sure what we can do about it. Yeah. Well, we shall see what uh, pans out. We'll see how Josh Charlie gets on uh, playing for Warrington, and we shall look at the Super League and uh, the Championship, hopefully, in better weather. Uh, this weekend. That's from Blink Back Chat. I know Christian Roberts week. going to get oh. far better now in better weather, Rob. Yeah, sure you better be aware, <laughs> son. You sure better be aware. And of course, they will finish above Huddersfield they in the will. league table. The next live rugby league coming up on Premier Sports is Friday the 23rd of March when Rochdale take on the Toronto Wolfpack on air at 7.30 and the kickoff is at 7.45. And you can check out all the action on Free Sports by going to www.freesports.tv. Right, that's it for Rugby League Back Chat. My thanks to the legend Scoey, to Martin Sadler from League Express and the owner of the Lee Centurions, Mr Derek Beaumont. We'll be back next week on Rugby League Back Chat from the Ark with Dave Woods in the chair. Join us then.